Captain Solok of the starship Tecumbra has arrived at Deep Space Nine. Captain Sisko's secret weapon is Jake, the slider Sisko. I almost said snake. <laughs> and a fancy Dan is a fielder who puts on extra flourish in his movements while making a play in hopes of gaining approval of spectators. Everybody knows that. Hello, everybody, and welcome to <laughs> The Seventh Rule with Sirach Lofton. Hello, hello. Hey, Sirach. Hey, there he is. My name is Ryan Tias. Today we're doing a review of Deep Space Nine, Season 7, Episode 4, Take Me Out to the Hollis Suite, written by Ronald D. Moore, directed by Chip Chalmers. Uh, this was October 21st, 1998. Where were you? Special thanks, by the way, to Daniel Martinez from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Thank you very much, Daniel Martinez. This is a NOG episode, so Melissa Longo is joining us. Hi. Hey. We also have a very, very special guest. It's also a ROM episode, everybody. If you're listening in, you're going, does that mean? Yes, it does mean. Max Grudenchik is here. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Just like when he's in the stands by himself cheering. <laughs> oh, I do that. Yeah. It's yeah. this way. Oh, yeah, right. You're right. Yeah. Oh, that's good. <laughs> I think it's very much a Cisco episode, but uh, but we'll talk about that later. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's a Cisco's episode, but it's also a Ram and Lita episode, I felt. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It was a family episode. Mm-hmm. <laughs> How's everybody doing? Yeah. Great. Feeling good. Feeling good. Actually, Great this that episode Max left is me here. With a good feeling. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's one of the things watching this episode. I actually got a really good feeling because it felt like everybody yes. came together in this episode to like get each other's back. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, let me just jump on that right now. Sirak, I almost called you Jake. Maybe I need a nap. I almost said snake <laughs> earlier. I almost called you Jake now. <laughs> Jake the snake. <laughs> when I was watching this episode today it hit me because when when i was a kid and i first watched it i remember going like eh, i like lasers and aliens you know what i mean and when i was a kid <laughs> i was like okay it's a cool episode fine but i want to see more dominion war stuff and then when i watched it later as an adult i was like actually this is a really good episode and then i when i watched it today i was like this is the cutest and sweetest and most heartwarming and fun yeah. episode of star trek ever period close the book in my opinion yes. it truly is i was almost moved to tears by how joyful and beautiful and warm this episode is absolutely yeah. the most joyful and most heartfelt episode of star trek ever in my opinion wow yeah i was moved to tears and not almost i was moved to yes. tears just because I kept saying over and over again, I love this episode. Yeah. I love this episode. Yeah. And yes. every single person has such a shining moment exactly. in this episode that is so full of heart and warmth and even warmth when he's trying to kill everyone. Death to the opposition. <laughs> <laughs> kill them. <laughs> really? Yes. And well, I, I, I forget me, Sir laughing a lot. <laughs> Sirach and Max, but I kept saying over and over and over again, this is so freaking cute. And I, I hope that's okay, but I thought it was just the cutest thing I've ever seen. I'm sorry, Sirach, what were you saying? Uh, yeah, well, there's a lot to unpack there. I, um, <laughs> I will say that I agree with Max's take um, about it being a Cisco episode, because yes, it is centered around Cisco's love of baseball and how that kind of permeates through Deep Space Nine. But what I really enjoy about it is the camaraderie of the episode. I enjoy the fact that everybody is working together to for this common goal of, which is you know not to defeat the Dominion or to take over uh, you know an alien race, but to actually just play a game and have fun and and. Max, I thought your performance was fantastic in this episode because of so many little things that you do when you do your ROM um, mm-hmm. performance, your character. You, you, you're so deep in the character that I, I'm, I'm like <laughs> inside your head. I, I feel like 
with the thoughts that are in your head, you wear outwardly as Rom, and there's not much there, but, <laughs> but you do wear that, and I love that. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. I love the performance. Yes, it was just so authentic to me, and um, the fact that everybody didn't know the game of baseball kind mm -hmm. of lent itself to me for the story unfolding, just kind of everyone having to learn you know, what the game was about and what, you know, what, what they were good in or what, what they weren't good in. I felt that allowed the story to kind of unfold as well. Mm -hmm. Now, Max, this is the rumor that's been flying around for 25 years that you were basically the best baseball player on the entire team or crew or cast. And so it was impossible for you to make it believable that you weren't good at it. So they made you throw with your left hand because no matter how you threw it with your right hand, it looked too competent. Is this yeah, true? It, it was, no, first of all, um, <laughs> I, 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 I wasn't the best baseball player, but I probably played baseball more than anybody else. Except, I don't know, Sirach, did you play baseball growing up? Uh, very early. I didn't play, um, like, high school or college baseball. Um, yeah, good pitching I, I, moved to, I moved to the basketball, mm -hmm. but I did, I did play baseball. I knew how to pitch um, and hit, but I just didn't play as heavy as maybe you did, Max. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't know. You know we, we had a coach in our neighborhood. He played semi-pro ball, and uh, he... He, we, we signed up with the Little League. Uh, this is, what, I don't know how old I was, like 12, maybe 13. Signed up with the Little League and we started playing in leagues, Kew Garden Hills Baseball Association it was. And we just, that's, that was the game. Mm -hmm. That was the game where in the little corner of the, of the area where I grew up, baseball. If you went down another four or five blocks, you might get basketball. <laughs> and then you, right. somewhere else you might get football. But uh, uh, we played baseball and we, we took it very seriously. Of course, our, our coach uh, took it very seriously. And, um, and we, in fact, we, we, we were on the road to Williams. Is it Williamsport? I think is where the Little League World Series is. We, we had two shots at it. And the, the, I think the last shot, we were from Queens, New York. We were from, and, and we had to play the other team, two teams representing Queens. Okay, I, this is going on too long, but, but <laughs> you were going to edit this, right? You're going to nope. edit it. Well, maybe. <laughs> no. No, no, I just love go. that no. that we say, we heard you were really good. He's like, no, 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 no. Well, let me walk you yeah. through uh, my childhood <laughs> the world career. Series. Go to the let world me tell series. you a little no bit. <laughs> <laughs> We the, the the great thing that happened is we beat the team from the Bronx. That's where Ira Bear is from, by the way. If he's listening, we okay. beat the team. We beat the team from the Bronx, and then we had to play Far Rockaway for the best team in Queens. Mm, wow. We lost. We lost to Far Rockaway. But if we had beaten Far Rockaway and one more team along the road, we would have been the World Little League champions. Mm. Wow. So. Mm. so uh, I, I was a much better fielder than I was a hitter. Uh, what position? Well, you know what? I, I can say that when I was watching you swing that bat, because you swung the bat for that first pitch, um, and uh, it was a strike, but you're a left-handed batter, right? If I'm not, is that right? No, I'm I'm a natural righty. Natural right. I'm an, I, were you I hit right hand. Left hand that in that scene? Yeah, yeah, they were making him do that so that he would not so be look as be good. As good. <laughs> no, but the glove thing, the glove thing was my idea. I just put the glove on the opposite hand. And uh, I, I, when we were playing catch, when we were warming up, I, I warned Nana that I wasn't, as, <laughs> I might not uh, catch so accurately. I said, I'm not, uh, I said, Nana, you should know I'm wearing my glove on the other hand. And she, she said, um, I have no idea what that means. <laughs> <laughs> she, didn't, she didn't know why I told her, but uh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, that was uh, so. That's baseball, funny. baseball was my 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 game, and uh, and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. One of yeah. one of my biggest laughs yeah, was that, 
one of my biggest laughs was actually when <laughs> the the ball just hits you in the glove. You guys are playing catch, I and I, it might have been the gnaw that tosses it to you, and you're just holding your glove, and it's just bing, <laughs> it's <the> glove. <laughs> and falls out. What position did you play uh, when you played, Max? Uh, for first year, I played second base and and then third base the next year. I, I switched off between second and third. So second base and third base. Yeah. I didn't quite have the, I wanted to play shortstop, but I didn't quite have an arm that could be counted on to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Speak, speaking of not having an arm, that scene where yes. you're, you catch the ball, where you're going in the outfield, you pick the ball up and you throw it and then you run, <laughs> pick it up and throw it. <laughs> <laughs> I love that part. Yeah. 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 I also, I Mark, like it when, uh, I like it when the ball's over his. <laughs> There's the, there's the shot where the ball's over his head. I got it. I yes. got it. I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I so love that laughs. part. And then it's just so many moments. funk <laughs> on the ground. Max, yes. can I ask you? I don't you, got it. When you first... Before we go, before we go, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. I would like to publicly state, is this going on record now? You're recording this, right? Yes. Yeah. I played a lot of baseball. I mean, and, and let me tell you, the, the kids I played with, my father passed away in maybe 1998, yeah. And uh, the kids I played baseball with were still playing in these older senior leagues. That's how oh, wow. serious, that's how serious they took the game in the neighborhood. Uh, so I played a lot of baseball. I have never, ever, ever heard the expression fancy Dan. Me neither. Me neither. I, Me neither. I, 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 I know what a double play is. I know what a squeeze play is. I, 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 I know what a bunt is. I, I know what a grand slam is. I do not. I, I, I only know. Uh, what, what is this term? Um, fancy Dan. Fancy Dan. I only know Fancy Dan because I've been told, you know, mm -hmm. that's in the script. So. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't. I, I, I never my, heard of it either. Man. I never heard that? of it either. I was, what the hell is a fancy Dan? Uh, I, I I thought they were making it up. Uh, I never heard of a fancy Dan to this day. Now there's a lot of rules in baseball that I've never heard of. So I will give you know a little bit of a disclosure on that. I there's, there's so many tiny rules in baseball that uh, you know I just don't know all of the rules. Um, I know that if you touch the umpire, you know, you're out of the game. <laughs> I know that part. <laughs> um, that was but so the fans, funny. I've never heard that before either. And actually when Bashir gives that line, now that is a fancy Dan. When he, <laughs> he said that, <laughs> I started laughing. <last> <laughs> <laughs> it, it is it, if you go to wiki fancy dan i think it does show up as a, oh, a, wow. a, a, a play with a lot of flourish that the yeah yeah okay but the, no I I never, also, that's maybe just word verbiage from you know the times before me the honus wagner babe ruth yeah. eras that i don't know maybe or maybe, maybe they not. made it up as something that happened after our time, like in oh. 2040. Oh, but yeah, right, I assumed right. it was something really old too. It Ryan, sounds old. That, Ryan, that is an excellent, excellent uh, I, I have hypo a hypothesis. Well, I, I have a question. Well, old though. Yeah, you heard, you Googled it, Melissa? No, I I had learned Fancy Dan from Deep Space Nine. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so the first time I heard so, it. Yeah. Melissa, nobody <laughs> ever says it. No, nobody, nobody, like, nobody, nobody. It looks like it's it. made up because I'm Googling yeah. it and all I'm finding is no. Memory Alpha, which is the Star Trek <laughs> Wikipedia. Oh. <laughs> no. I think so, you got to yeah. Google baseball fancy Dan or fancy Dan baseball. You did. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. It, it, it would be a great name for a rock group, an 80s rock group, you know, the yeah, fancy totally. Dan. <laughs> Opening for Queen. <laughs> yeah. They fancy come dance. out doing flips and yeah. that is. We'll have to ask that Ronald is, D. Moore. That makes sense. The yeah. fancy yeah. dance. Yeah. I did want to ask um, you, Max, actually, yeah, I mean, yeah. about, yes. about, yeah. about the script, which was when you first saw the script. I know it was in summer of 98, but or September of 98. Do you remember 
your feeling when you first saw it? Do you remember if you thought, hey, this is a, a great fun episode for Rom? Or do you remember thinking, wow, a baseball script, this ought to be fun? Or do you remember any kind of impressions you had when you first saw it? To be really honest, when I get a script and whatever the script is, I, I think they made a mistake in giving it to me. <laughs> they got the wrong guy. So, <laughs> so I have the script, I read it, and, and I, I, I take the script home with me, you know, and I'm thinking, this will never, this will never happen. I will never be involved in this episode. It, and and that, 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 is the, that is it for every episode. That, and, then, and then as we get closer to doing it, it becomes more and more real for me. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah, it, it, it's, 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 it's a very raw answer. So, <laughs> so when, I, when I get the script, when it's all brand new, um, everybody else will be in it. Sirach will be in it and uh, Fancy Dan will be in it. But, <laughs> but I... <laughs> I, they'll come up to me and say, sorry, uh, we only had room for nine. There's only nine on a baseball field. So, uh, yeah, yeah. I don't think, I don't dare wow. to think uh, how good it can be or uh, what, what a gift they're giving me. Mm. When they gave me Lita, that was a gift. Yeah. When they gave me Lita, when Ram, when, they, when Ram and Lita so to speak, hooked up. Well, you know, you know, Max, you have a tremendous amount of humility, but you know, it's season seven, and we're already fully bought in on the Max Lita Rom storyline, yep. and yeah. and Nog, <laughs> and your yeah. son Nog being, you know, working his way up Starfleet. Like, so the, you're 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 tied into the script in so many different ways. It's not even funny, um, not to mention Quark, your, your you know your brother. So there's so yes. many ways, but. Um, the question I had for you, Max, was, so I looked at while I was watching and I said, oh, my number, my jersey number was 78. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty sure that I picked that number because I'm born in 1978. And they probably said, which number would you like to have? So I picked 78. Also picked that Atlanta Braves hat earlier in the, in the mm -hmm. uh, episode. But my question to you is, did you pick number 13 for Rom? And if so, why? No. And when I watched the episode this past week, I saw 13 and I thought, oh, that makes sense for Rom. I, th I just thought it made sense. Yeah, I don't me think too. They... Me too. Yeah, <laughs> I thought that too for Rom. I thought it makes sense for Rom. <laughs> I don't think they asked me anything about it. Uh, the only thing that might have happened, maybe I had, maybe they offered me choices, three choices, 13, 33, and 99 or something like that. But I don't even think that happened. I was 13 from the get go, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that was yeah, fine that was, with me. That one of, I was fine with it too because it felt like, oh, the unlucky guy is going to get lucky. You know, the unlucky number, or the myth, the myth behind the number right. thirteen. So, I actually thought it was su suitable for the the character and the role and, mm -hmm. and the timing of of the event. So, I and like the, that. And I also, yeah. And, and the I also fact noticed that, that he, you know, he, he got nine. lucky yeah. with his bunts at the right. end. That was right. so What's a bunt? amazing. <laughs> <laughs> But I also noticed that Kira, Kira was wearing number nine, and I was like, oh, she kind of does represent what Deep Space Nine yeah. is because mm. of the history of the Bajoran, you know, station, all, all that stuff. So I just felt like, uh, I don't know, I felt like the numbers themselves were like almost appropriate for each mm -hmm. character. I yeah. paid attention to that. Yeah. Yes, I agree with you. Yeah. Do you remember who, what numbers uh, Captain Cisco had? Because I didn't pay attention to that. Wow. Or Nog, and that 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 was the number I didn't take a look at. That was funny because mm. I was looking at other numbers. Uh, Cisco, I did notice that you know they had the B Cisco for him the, and the J Cisco for me, which I thought was cool. Just a, a little bit of a distinguish, but um, I didn't see his number. I, I would have wrote it down. Yeah, I don't know. Wouldn't he be number one? Or no? Oh. Yeah, that, that would be the most. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Nine Cisco. <laughs> That would make sense, right? <laughs> um, I remember seeing the the B Cisco, but then I didn't look at the number. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, me too. Me yeah, too. what's cool? I, and, sorry, go ahead. Next. 
I thought it was Cisco's episode. He's the one who goes through the change. Mm-hmm. He hates this guy, uh, Solok. He mm-hmm. hates his guts. Exactly. And he's, he's, he's caught up in, in this hatred. And he knows it's no good. But, but he, he, he kind of can't help it. And, I mean, he's a, he's a freaking Starfleet captain. And he knows he shouldn't be so, what's the word? He, he shouldn't waste his time on this, this uh, 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 Vulcan guy. And I think he, he, he learns that mm-hmm. between, between the beginning and the end of the episode. He learns that. And that's the scene in the bar at the end. They're all laughing and whooping it up. And Solak has no idea what, you know, <laughs> why they're saying they won. They won. It was 10 to 1. They lost 10 to 1. How could a, how could a victory <laughs> be pulled out of that? Well, well, it, it's attitude. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the attitude that these guys, uh, that, that the Niners showed in, in their play. Well, and it, yeah, it does. And, and, and Ram is instrumental in that lesson for Cisco yep. because he, he, mm. he represents what baseball is. He is, Ram is all heart. And that's what Cisco loves about baseball. And, and he sees Ram's commitment, whether he's playing or not, to the game and to his family and to the heart of this team. And that's, that's, I think what shifts Cisco's perspective from, well, why do I need to give Solok all my attention? These are the people that matter. Rom yeah, yeah, is the yeah. people that matter. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yes. Um, and I would even go a little bit step farther. I think, I think early on Cisco uh, was hard on Rom. That that moment in that scene was kind of hard to watch because he was really harsh. When Sis, when yeah. Avery wants to get harsh with you, he knows <laughs> how to make you feel really small and and really shut you down really quickly. I think there was a moment there where he told uh, 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 Nog, he was like, "Is anyone talking to you, Ensign?" He said it. <laughs> he said it like, hard. Like, Whoa! Is, is anyone talking to you, Cadet? Is anyone talking yeah. to you, Cadet? Yeah. Or am I talking yeah. to you, Cadet? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. He he just belittled him and and like shut him down really quickly. And then you said your character says, I, "I can't play," and he takes that and he says, "Yeah, that's the smartest thing you said." All <laughs> oh, I know. Oh, I know. Yeah. So, yeah. So yeah. Mean. And he's so hard on you, and you know. To his credit, that's that's very good acting because mm-hmm. you know that's just him, you know, showing the obsession that he has with the moment and with yep. uh, you know with this game. But he really cut you down and he cut Nog down, and to the point where everybody was going to kind of, you know, quit and say, "Hey, if, if he's going to be like that and act like that to Rom, then I don't even want to play," you know, because this is it's just too much. He's just being a jerk about it. And I think that moment in the stance when the two of you guys are sitting there and he tells you basically, you know, you're going to get in the game, you know, like, yeah. come on, I'm going to sub you in. I think that's when we learn or he learns that it's not whether you win or you or lose, but how you play the game. Right. <laughs> right. Exactly. Right. Yeah. exactly. Yeah, that is the lesson. Yeah. yeah. That that was the moment that I was referring to. You, yes. You said it. Yes. Very That's how you play the game, and he saw <laughs> yeah. he saw that he, that he played you to the side. He saw that your dedication was there, that you were cheering on in the in the in the stands by yourself, mm-hmm. and he realized, you know what? There's more to this game than whether we win or lose. It's going to be about us playing together as a team and celebrating as a team, whatever the highs and lows of the moments are. And I felt like that was the lesson of understanding for me. That was the thing I walked away saying, this is such a great episode. It, it's saying so much without really saying it, but it's it's just telling you about the value of teamwork. You talked mm-hmm. about being on a team. That was one of the big lessons I got from being in team sports was, mm-hmm. was being a good teammate. <laughs> more than just winning and losing world series and games and whatever state championships. It's really about the camaraderie and the bond that you have with your teammates, with your coach, 
you know, for, for your city, for your franchise, whatever, whatever it is, you know, and it's like, that to me is what I really walked away from this episode feeling they captured that very mm -hmm. well in this episode. They captured what is the real value of the game. Mm, definitely. And, and you're reminding me, you're, you're making me see right now that the, the, what, what Cisco, the, the path, the journey that Cisco takes in that episode, he, he, he's got everything he wants in terms of Solak. I mean, Solak has no clue and is so frustrated at the end where he has never been before because Solak has had Cisco on kind of under his, uh, I don't know what the word is, uh, it, it, it's been kind of in control of Cisco. But now, right. without even meaning to, Cisco has changed everything with Solak because, he, like you said, it's uh, how you play the game. He, he learns that lesson. And that's all he needs. That's all. That's all he needs to to get back right. at Solok. They call yeah. that Solok is living rent free in Cisco's head. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Also, I want to point heard. out that I uh, I too learned that sportsmanship lesson playing golf. Everybody knows that. Um, so that didn't work. The teamwork thing. We should have gone yeah. to a break like five seconds ago. I'm so Thanks sorry. <laughs> uh, we, do, we do have to jump to a break. I know. I, Melissa glossed over so hard there. She's like, where is he going? Hopefully I, like, away from I don't, here. I don't get it. <laughs> um, all right. So, so we got to go to a break. Everybody stick around. We may have a surprise for you on the other side of this. Max, thank you so much for joining us. This is Thank awesome. You, we really appreciate mm -hmm. your time. Uh, everybody else stick around and we'll be right back on the seventh rule. <laughs> 